I am quite literally inside Brighton Pier's ghost train, the Horror Hotel, to show you how the whole thing works. The chief engineer of rides is going to give us a guided tour. So this flying skeleton is now going to come towards you. We're going to learn how lots of spooky stuff gets triggered, locate the power switch for the entire ghost train, and relive a past disaster. I'm going to go on a ride myself and tell you how scary I find it. <laughs> Spoiler, quite scary actually. I featured this very ghost train in both of my novels. And the ghost train, inside which a horde of mechanical frights await reactivation. And so now it's amazing to be inside this thing. And trust me, it's more complicated than you might think. Isn't that right, Mabel? <laughs> Ugh. I've worked on Brighton Pier for 15 years and the ghost train's been here for 14. So I was involved in bringing all the parts up the pier and there was a lot of it. So the company that manufactured this ride were called EOS, uh, based in northern Italy near Venice, and this was seven Arctic trailer loads to bring the ride over. It took almost two months to build. Normally this is, this is covered up, Yes. but because uh, we come in and do the maintenance, we have to go through there, turn the power on and things in the morning. It's good that he's got a mask on. Yes. I quite like horror films, but I'm probably more of a thriller man myself. As Peter readies the train for my solo ride, let me note that I'm not covering every single fright inside so as to preserve some of the horror hotel surprises. And the rooms you do see may be out of order. In fact, some of them are bang out of order. And following in the footsteps of Jack Sparks, off we go. Now I remember this being one of the creepiest parts of the ride for me. Where you go round and round and round. Yeah. And you hear this click, 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 click. Ah, I don't like this bit. So this is uh, what we call an anti-rollback, these teeth on the side of the track. Yeah. And there's nylon blocks under the car that uh, are sprung loaded, so they click over the top of them like a ratchet. Yeah. So if the car stops for any reason, it will just go back on that ratchet and stop it rolling oh, back I down see. the hill. Well, that's yeah. good. Hello there, mate. You're going up in complete darkness in this yes, bit, aren't you? and you don't know what's going to happen. You, you're waiting for something to happen. And you sort of, you get the sense of being in this sort of great big mechanical beast. Yes. This bit is really creepy. Part of the ghost train's appeal is the anticipation, I guess, isn't it? Yes, he's, he's waiting to see what comes. Yeah. That's yeah. got um, ah. luminous paint on it. Nice. Oh, does that actually move that spot? Yeah, then? that's why the thing comes down the road, so it's coming towards you. And it makes up a picking noise. Like that spider. We can't carry on walking down that way, but we can walk around and get to the other end because this is uh, yeah, this is a bit like a free fall course. dip. Yes, we don't want to go near there. No. Ah. Whoa, and we're going down. But it does quite a sharp break when it gets up to the other side, and it all you know stops and jerks you, which you're not maybe expecting. <laughs> Whoa. Who's this when he's up and dressed? So does he shake, rattle and roll? He, he shakes around, yeah. And he's got lovely green socks on, I guess. Yeah. Those are pretty scary. There's, a, there's another one inside the, the cupboard. Oh. Oh, yeah. So this is a dead space, but we just use it for storing. Oh. Things. So if you go down around to the right, so we use space. Space. parts for the ride up here and some other parts and we use it as our archive store for our documents. Thank God you got some cable glands there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And again, when you see behind the back of it, it makes you appreciate a little bit more of what's involved. So this yeah. whole ride is controlled by something called a PLC. Okay. Program Logic Controller. As the car reaches a certain point yeah. in the track, then it, it sets uh, an input off on the PLC. And then these blue units up the top here are like SD sound cards. And every time you, you reach that subject and they're, they're triggered, then the sound repeats off. I've got grandkids and they love to come to the pier, come to granddad's pier. So I end up going on the rides with those. Uh, and quite often I learn quite a lot and come off the rides and say, oh, we've got to do that. We need to fix this. We need to do something with that. So it is good to see the ride from the customer's perspective yes. and make sure it's as good as it can be. What does the word subject refer to? Is that basically so, mean a spooky thing? A spooky thing. Yeah. So <laughs> as you come to the ride, there are different areas that you come to and yeah. each one of them is called a subject so it might be a man who's going to stand up or a lady gets out of bed yeah. or it might just be a spooky noise 
and there's something like 17 subjects as you go around the ride. Quite high tech for a 2007 I know. ride. And of course it's got safety built into it as well because it's a bit like operating a railway track. So one car can be in a section and if another, if that car was to stop and another car tries to enter that section it shuts the ride down. So there always has to be a section of track between the cars when they're going around the ride. So that's fully automatic? Yes, isn't it? yes. so it's the operator the doesn't have to do that. No, exactly. Because he could be serving customers and speaking to customers and making sure yeah, they've got the seat yeah. belts done up before he's dispatching cars. Yeah. So although we've got the CCTV camera in there, you can't watch the camera all the time. So the operator has to divide his attention between making sure customers are, are securely fastened in the ride, dispatching them, yeah. watching what's going on, where the ride's going, and watching the customers getting off the end of the ride as well, because then he has to move the cars along. So oh, the sure. operator has quite a busy time of it. So yeah. this would be a subject. Yes. So as the, as the car approaches, Yeah. It triggers to that PLC. Oh dear. What he used to do was spit water at you oh. as you went past. There's a bit of an issue with that because uh, Legionnaire's disease. Oh. So uh, you've either got to put chemicals in the water, which is not nice if you're going to spray it on people, or uh, you need to change the water every day. So we were changing the water every day. But what it does, it rots the floor and was rotting the steelwork below. So we've turned off the water spray because wow. it's not a good idea inside. So how many years ago did that stop the water? Uh, probably within a year of getting the ride. The books are all dummy but screwed on because what you find is people will try and get out of the car and grab things as they go past. So oh really? They have to make sure that they're out of arm's reach but everything has to be fixed down as well. Looks like there's a couple of loose ones there, isn't it? These might be real ones, I think, yeah. <laughs> but they are fixed down. Oh yeah, they've been nailed in there. <laughs> he is quite a creepy character yes. even though he doesn't spit water anymore. No. Oh, I see. So we're on the other side of the dip. Right. One thing I really like about the ride is it's, I mean, it's big but it's relatively compact and yet the the route is quite ingenious, it yes. kind of makes the most of the space. Exactly, it? all the space is, is used up really, except for that storage space at the top that we walk through is the only bit really that's, that's yeah. not used for anything. Love so that. these doors would normally be shut, Yes. and as the car comes round, they don't open until the last minute, so it looks like the car's going to crash into the doors, Yes. and just as the car gets there, then the doors swing open. So it goes around here, and then this is where we descend to another level. So again, this will be in darkness, but there are some lamps on the wall on that side and this side. Yes. And then what happens as you go down, these doors rattle, they, they move open and close. Yes. And they've got chains on, so they make a bit of a, a, a scary rattling noise as you go past. And there's, there's nice sort of layers of detail, like behind yes, this, you can see like there's a bit of artwork there, in there. There is a light that comes on in there, but you have to, when you're coming in the car, you don't know what to expect, so you get suddenly that, and then suddenly this comes on, so you, you, yeah. you this way and then that way. <laughs> Now at this halfway point of the video you may be thinking to yourself surely the Brighton Ghost Train has been on that pier for more than 14 years and you'd be right. The first Ghost Train to appear on Brighton Pier was in 1990 and it looked like this which looks all very nice but sadly in 2003 this happened. Yeah, there was a terrible fire on the pier and the Ghost Train was utterly destroyed hence the 2007 rebuild. As you'd imagine, everything on the current ghost train is turned off at night and there are fire exits a go-go. And then this is oh, the fire exit door behind me, so if there was a fire in the ride, yeah. you could come out the front or you can come out the back this way. So if you open the door, yeah. that's the emergency message and oh, the emergency see. stop's gone on. So if someone tries to enter the ride, yeah. Uh, by forcing this door open yes. it's going to stop it okay. and the same if someone goes out with the rides in operation it's going to stop the ride. One of the things that did happen when we first got this ride and we were advertising it on the website as Horror Hotel we were getting people phoning up to the pier to see if they could book a night in the hotel on the end of the pier. You know one thing I wanted to ask you about this place is is there like a single on and off plug switch? There is a main <laughs> power isolator. <laughs> so this is the switch. Wow. So that will turn all the power off on the ride. Look at that switch. That switch is amazing. But <laughs> well, that will shut the whole ride down, so everything will stop. Uh, but the emergency lights will all come back on inside the ride. So I see. if we ever had a power cut and you've got customers in, yes. we need to be able to come back inside and, and find those customers. So we've got that screen downstairs, so we yeah. know where the cars are, yes. how many are in, so the operators know where they need to go to. One customer, when the ride stopped and the message sounded to stay in her seat and everything was fine, decided she wasn't safe and she'd phoned the police because she was trapped on this ride on the pier. But of course the police have to attend, but she was already released from the car. They did turn up, but and I don't think they were too impressed. So are we going down here? I guess we are, yes. right? So uh, because the car's now going down here, yes. uh, it will try and go faster. 
Yes. So we have these brake units here. So underneath the car there's a the brake fin that sits down, that runs down that slot. And these are sensors. So as the car goes past, it activates the sensor and it knows how long before the car should reach the next sensor. Because I said too quick, yeah. I'm going too fast, closes the brake. Now here's a pretty ghoulish character. So he's a bit gruesome. Look at his face, wow. And he's cooking up some nice goulash yeah. there. Yeah, I think he's needs to practice his washing up. Uh, Gordon Ramsay. So these beams above your head, nice and shiny silver, these yeah. were the ones that were rusty, we had to change these, and that was from the water that that spitting man. Ah, so the, the floor <laughs> got wet and, 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 and of course it rusted the steel. Now, who on earth is this over yeah. here? That's my auntie Mabel. Yes, my auntie Mabel. She springs up out of the seat and sort of comes up at you. <laughs> auntie Mabel's mechanism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that looks quite complicated. Yes. But again, you know, they bought a standard chair yeah. and then they modified it to get that mechanism to fit through the back of the chair, it which is why they've covered it up with that cloth just to hide the big hole at the back. So now we go through this piece. So there's a guy in this box that Ooh. sits up and Ooh. comes towards you. Awesome. Ah. And then on the opposite wall, there's a figure that pushes up against that cloth. Oh. You can see the outline of the hands and the, yes. and the face is up here. It's got a UV light under here, which makes him show up as though he's going to try and come through and get you. So this flying skeleton is now going to come towards you. You're going down and he's coming towards you. It, it seems like he's coming quicker. Oh, brilliant. So in here, we've got a, a small workshop area. If a car breaks down during the day, we can bring it in here. Yeah. So this it? is under the, um, under the ramp. Yeah. Coming down, so it would be a space that you couldn't use for much else. So we do have quite a few problems with cars breaking down, but that could be mechanical or electrical. But the other thing we get a lot of, people come on a ride with a drink, when they've drunk it, or when they're going up the spiral, the bottle rolls out of the car, goes on the track, lays next to the track, and when the car comes around, there's pickup brushes, and it knocks the brushes off, and then that stops the car on the track. So wherever that happens, then all the other cars back up and stop behind it as well. So then we have to do an evacuation of the ride. God, there's still more. I'm really impressed yes. by how much stuff so there I is. Have, I have put quite a lot in. There is a lot. I'm so, guessing he sits or she sits yep, bolt upright. Like, that was another one that, in fact, that didn't squirt. He used to squirt water out of the toilet. Oh, yes. So that's another one that we actually stopped. You can <laughs> see the pipe work there in place <laughs> for the water to squirt out the front of the toilet. And who's buying that show? Nothing there. there. It's just a just just prop for show. See, that's a nice use of a corner, isn't it? It is, yeah. Just use it for something. And, it's nice for there to be things in the ghost train where you think something's going to happen yeah. and it actually doesn't. <laughs> and again, it's a ride you can go round and you'll see things that you don't see the first time, the second time, the third time. You'll, you'll see other things. And he's, he's a late riser as you come round. He, he really he is. He sits up in his bed. Yeah. Go but again, on. we've just got these little glowing candle lamps above the bed. That, so uh, it's not fully yeah. lit. Yes. But it, enough that you can just see what's going to go on what's happening. Yeah, this is a creepy little scene, isn't it? I don't even want to get that close to him with the lights on. Oh no. <laughs> Back to safety. Yeah, that is surprisingly creepy. It's just, I think it's just on the borderline for a family experience. The motion of the car, the mechanical nature of it, and being trapped inside this great big mechanical contraption, plus some of those creepy dolls coming to life. That was actually pretty scary, you know? The trouble is it has to be family friendly. You know, you could make it a lot more gory. Yes. But because it's for children as well, yeah, you yeah. need to, you know, draw the line at not making it too scary and give them nightmares and never want to come back again. If you stand outside when the ride's running, you hear lots of screams, but equally you see people get off the other end and you remember, whoa, that was a lot of rubbish, that wasn't very good. But we are a family attraction, so we have to be suitable for six or seven year olds that can go on the rides. But sometimes some of the subjects that are on there, the children don't notice, but the adults do. Sometimes the children are too naive to understand what what it is they're seeing. I don't believe we've ever actually had anyone make an official complaint, but it, it is a horror hotel. So if you don't want to be frightened, yeah. don't go in the horror hotel, really. <laughs> Wise words from Peter there, who also tells me that the horror hotel does not plan to rest on its spooky laurels. 
we are thinking of doing some projections on the walls because there are some dead areas in the ride. And the beauty of that is that you can change it easily. There's no big job to rip everything out and put a new subject in. You can just change the video clip or the audio that you're going to play. So that's something we're actively looking at now. Thanks so much to Brighton Pier for giving me such amazing access to this ghost train. And I highly recommend that you come and stay at the Horror Hotel for three minutes, especially as it's Halloween. If you enjoyed this video, then you might want to hit like and you might also want to subscribe to enjoy more retro and scary horror themed delights. Until the next video then, don't forget to embrace your obsession.